Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Saturday night. It is the Earth Master out here about 1021 p.m. California time, November 30th, 2024, December. Oh, coming too soon. This year went by pretty quickly. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.7 earthquake, uh, followed by some, uh, looks like some 4.0 earthquake activity earlier. On the Big Island of Hawaii, out there across Kilauea Volcano. So let's see what's happening out here. Uh, latest information here from the USGS volcano site. Still put out, uh, looks like a few days ago. Nothing changing, changing in terms of the volcano status. We are noticing a little bit of more, a little bit more earthquake activity up here across the upper East Rift Zone, where we're seeing this little cluster of movement take place. Let's go ahead and check out the seismograph station here. See what we have. Uh, some spitter spatter of earthquake activity. I don't see any uh, magma migration, but we are getting a little, uh, what looks like a little bit of pressurization there across the upper east rift zone. We'll continue to watch that. Really nothing major going on here uh, for now. Uh, that four-pointer stirring up underneath the eastern flank there of Mauna Loa. That earthquake, though, uh, fairly deep at about 12 miles there earlier this morning. A little bit of movement down south here, or I should say east, of the current earthquake swarm. This earthquake activity, roughly shallow as well. So we'll see what happens here in the coming days. Uh, I just wish the tilt meters out here were working properly. Let's go check one out here real quick and see what we have. Uh, deformation data at the summit area shows us that uh, things are going up slightly. There's the, uh, I believe that's a human adjustment, antenna adjustment here recently. Back on the 29th, uh, but we're still going up. A little bit of stair-stepping uh, activity adding to the inflation here. So looks like we potentially could be at a point where we were at back in uh, the end of September when we last witnessed the um, middle east rift zone there. Uh, see a little fissure open up along with a short-lived eruption. This is the past... Uh, past year chart the inflation data that's the last eruption there we've been going up since then so might be there at a, a point where we could start to see uh, uh or could start talking about seeing another eruption here soon around the area so we'll continue to watch that man look at all this activity across the western pacific that is a bunch of movement Let's see what we got here since this morning's update far as newer activity goes. Remember the red rings here on the globe indicating older activity, white rings, newer movement. Looks like we got a swarm back here across the west side of Japan. It's going to be, uh, let's see here. Oh, well, the USGS really not doing a good job on reporting any of this. Uh, but looks like here across this area, right about here along the plate boundary, is seeing a pretty good swarm of activity. Uh, so, and that's some newer activity up here on the Earthquake 3D globe. A little bit of newer movement down south here as well, putting the strain across these subduction zones. Uh, there's a, well, any of these could produce a large mega quake at any time. Uh, this one is the area that put, that the Japanese Meteorological Agency put out a mega quake warning for the, uh, a Nankai Trough, the Kumano Ridge area, capable of producing an 8.0 earthquake. And hey, we're, you know, we're expecting one here. I feel we're overdue for an 8-pointer because 8-pointers supposed to happen every year, if not every year, every other year. And our last 8-pointer was back in 2021. So any time now, we could see an 8-pointer out here. Most likely around a major subduction zone region such as that. Uh, Java Trench is an area to watch as well. A couple twos there for now. Uh, looks like the activity has halted across this area. Not a whole lot of migration going on up there for now. Uh, New Zealand area, a couple more threes. Some activity, shallow adjustment there on the Kermadec Trench. Uh, but quite active out here. Quite a few fours stirring up there. 5.1, one of the deeper quakes here into the Tonga Trench. Or it could be potentially the Kermadec Trench here, one of the subduction zones. Uh, that 5.1, pretty deep there, 326 miles deep for that quake. All right, let's check out California here. Uh, latest activity, there's a little 
little bit of a pattern going on here up across this mountain range. See that trail of earthquake activity leading off here? Let's see, and Bakersfield he, uh, is even starting to kick back up here. This is the area that's seen that uh, that five-pointer a couple months back, and it swarms. This area sees a little bit of swarming along with various other areas when things are on the uptick out here. Uh, 2.5 and above, nothing for the West Coast. So all microquake activity, but uh, we're noticing just a little bit of, uh, you know, various areas here showing some uptick, specifically this uh, region right here and kind of, a, again, a little west to east pattern. The flow, general flow of the strain here along the plate boundary comes from the south and is moving up to the to the uh, north, northwest. That's a general plate movement there between the Pacific here to the west and the North American plate. So we'll watch that. No swarming, no major swarming going on, but definitely seeing a little bit of uptick here, it looks like. Outside the Santa Barbara area as well, up here along the uh, a couple different coast range faults. Ridgecrest filling in. Um, along the Calaveras Fault, looks like a couple smaller quakes. Nothing major going on across Northern California. This is the typical earthquake activity there at the um, Calpine um hydrothermal plants out there there's a whole bunch of these um hydrothermal plants and they they uh they produce a lot of earthquakes a lot uh, i don't know the exact process involved there's i, I got a little idea but uh yeah they, they create earthquakes out here and there's a bunch specifically around these two regions here with an overall number today 74 earthquakes in one day there's a bunch of those out there, more than two. There's probably 15 or 20 of those plants. Um, total tally out here in the last month, 900, close to 900 earthquakes with the largest magnitude of 3.0. Sometimes they can get up in the four range, uh, mid four, but uh, they, uh, yeah, it's probably not a good idea to get uh, in the four range because then we start talking about damage out here to uh, the communities or little houses that live nearby. Uh, let's see here what else we got for the west coast pretty quiet through oregon and washington a quick glance at the trimmer map here tonight shows us that we only have a whopping eight epicenters of trimmer here along the cascadia not that big of a deal whatsoever rest of the country one little earthquake out in new madrid seismic zone once again 2.7 in the new Mid new madrid missouri region this area has uh, seen, uh, I'd say, definitely a more noticeable uptick here in the last couple months uh, in terms of earthquake activity. Coming up on uh, about 26 earthquakes of various magnitudes, including a couple threes out there, 3.7, the largest in that cluster. So we'll continue to watch that. Uh, let's see. Middle America Trench is super active down here. I was waiting uh, for some activity to stir up further northward along the plate boundary, but uh, it doesn't look like it has hit California yet. I mean, we've had a couple of smaller quakes up here, microquakes, as I just showed you guys, but most of the momentum and strain roughly about, about the Baja California area southward through the Middle America Trench. But uh, we'll continue to watch that maybe for some migration up north uh puerto rico trench they're pretty active as well getting uh, some swarming going on there across the area of the puerto rico trench 4.0 earlier this evening in that same little cluster group another area of some heightened movement recently south america twos and threes it looks like maybe a couple fours in there as well nothing major and the atlantic ocean the big old oceanic rift zone out here 4.8. The rest of the globe, as you can see, pretty minimal, fairly minimal. Not a whole lot going on there across the Mediterranean. We'll uh, kind of keep an eye on things and see how tonight plays out. Space weather activity. No major flares happening. The solar flare chart here shows us that. Uh, let's take a look here. If it's going to work. They've been having some issues out here recently. 
uh, multiple sea flares here in the last couple days, but it looks like things are starting to stabilize, not getting all that uh, little sizzling. I call that sizzling here when it's really um, active like that, but uh, things are starting to die out, it looks like. Um, still looking at, uh, I guess this is recent. It's got uh, the UTC time of today on it. Not a whole lot in terms of flaring. Uh, the magnetogram image, the one that we have to deal with for now, is going to be this black and white image. And uh, it's really not uh, all that nice I mean, of an image when it comes to trying to figure out the complexity here. We're used to uh, this image. The Stanford University SDO office somehow flooded and it messed up a bunch of their servers and data. I, I find that a little odd because, you know, something like that, you think you would... Somebody would be checking on it, right? There'd be prevention, some type of uh, methods used to prevent stuff like that from happening around sensitive computers, right? So we got this to deal with. It's current, but uh, not really showing much here in terms of complexity. This is the older image here from the 26. Hopefully they can get something like that going uh, pretty soon. Get it back online. Uh, flare thread about 10% chance, M flare at 40, C flare around 99% chance or so. Nothing major in the auroras for now. And um, yeah, even Kevin here mentioning that uh, they're missing the solar imagery courtesy of the Solar Dynamics Observatory. Um, yeah, hopefully they get that fixed. Uh, does the far side watch work? It doesn't that halted there on the 25th so we're lacking that data as well we don't know what's on the far side of the sun now in terms of sunspot coverage goodness all right well not much i can do about that no major severe weather in the forecast here for now folks a lot of cold air in place here across a good portion of the country check out these uh, uh temperature anomalies here a very massive cool pool of air out here across uh the country including down in florida uh, the lighter colored purples there indicating uh, 16 to 18 degree departure from average. So that is uh, what they're dealing with. We got some above average temperatures out here across the West Coast. These guys are going to have another cold blast of air coming down. Watch this as we head into next week. Boom. So get used to the cold air. Even some colder air in place. Maybe uh uh, 20 degrees departure from average it looks like as we head into early next week uh, west coast out there high pressure in the west low pressure jet stream bringing all that cold air down from canada as we put this into motion a third shot of cold air coming into the region there uh, it is winter time right so a lot of lake effect snow across this area around the great lakes region and i'm hoping something changes out here this is getting old real quick uh, looks like maybe towards the middle of December we'll see somewhat of a pattern change there. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of these bright blue sunny days. Uh, let's check out the total snowfall out here. Uh, a bunch of snowfall across the Great Lakes area. Quite a bit. All that cold air in place. Definitely going to produce uh, that lake effect snow across the area. Uh, precipitation very limited out here for California. And this is about the middle of December. Up until about then, though, it's pretty sketchy. Not a whole lot going on there for rain. Even the Pacific Northwest has been lacking uh, moisture up there so far. Um, you know, since our last atmospheric river event, let's hope we can get that to change. I'm, I'm, I got my fingers crossed here. Look at that. Why does it have to be like that? <laughs> I don't like that. Everywhere else out there is getting rain except for a good portion of the West. Um, let me bring this back up here real quick. A symbol. I want to check out the northern region here and see what we have for patterns. There's that massive high pressure that's creating the cold air, right? You got this uh, um, counterclockwise pressure gradient there with the high pressure in the northern hemisphere. And that is 
creating this low pressure, bringing all that cold air down. And uh, that's not going to change until we get rid of that high pressure. And it looks to be, uh, look at that, massive up here. And then it reforms further south. And it just sits there. I do not like that. That's a dominant pattern there, and it needs to go away. Um, until that does, we're going to have a pretty boring winter out here in the West Coast. So, ah, oh, man. All right. Let's see what else we got here, folks. Uh, I think that's about it for this Saturday night. Uh, nothing major there on the seismograph stations. They look pretty quiet. One little spike of an earthquake there on the China Lake. We, we got to check Yellowstone. I didn't see any quake activity there, but uh, I always feel like I forget about it. And this, one of these times we're going to forget about it and they're going to be having a good earthquake swarm. Uh, but it looks pretty quiet. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity out here at all. There's intermittent data blackout or loss. Uh, just a technical issue there with that station. Uh, but aside from that, folks, uh, enjoy the day. and en Well, enjoy the evening. I'm out of here. I'm heading to bed. Uh, just have a good night. You know, we'll catch you guys back out here in the morning for the Sunday morning update. Stay safe out there. Have a good one.